Hello, this is a quick tutorial on the basics of the log reading program Gina. How we'll cover basic settings, adding characters, setting up triggers, and finally some of the supported tags you can use. I'll leave timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. So what is Gina? Grimagux Incantatory Notation Apparatus, or Gina for short, is a log monitoring application that provides audio and visual feedback based on triggers that you set up. These triggers can make Gina say something with text-to-speech, display text on screen, start a timer, or play a sound file. Gina can be downloaded from the Gamasoft website. I'll put a link in the description of this video directly to this download page. There's no installation, so once you download it, you can just double-click on the launcher to open the program. So I've already got Gina open here. Uh, once the program is open, I would recommend changing a few settings. You can do this by clicking on the blue square up here and then clicking settings. In the general tab, I would recommend having enable sound, enable text, and enable timers all selected. Display match log is just an output of every trigger that's happened. I think it defaults to 100. I turned mine down to 10, but you could also turn this off if you don't find it useful. I would also make sure that the EverQuest folder is selected here by hitting the three buttons and then navigating to where it is on your computer. Next, we're going to go to the Sharings tab. We want to make sure that these top two options are selected. Accept share invitations from anybody. I have my automatic merge turned off, but you could turn it on if you find that useful. Once you have those selected, we're just going to go ahead and hit Save. Now that Gina is open and our settings are good to go, we can start adding some basic triggers. First, we need to tell Gina which log file to read. You can see I have a huge list of names on the left side of the window. When you first launch Gina, there will be no characters set up, so this section is going to be empty. To add a character, click on the sun-faced man that says add in the character section on top of the window. This will pop up a character editor screen. Click on the three dots on the end of the log file and then navigate to your EverQuest logs folder and select the EQ log file for the character you want to set up first by double clicking on it or selecting the file and clicking open. The character's name should default into the profile and name field. You can change the default colors, the voice you want to use, how Gina will pronounce your character's name, Let's say I wanted Gina to call me Cool Craig. I could just edit this field to say Cool Craig instead of Aggro Craig. You can test this by hitting the little green arrow on the right. Cool Craig. When you have settings set up to your liking, you can just click Save. This should add a character to the left box. You can repeat this process with however many characters you'd like. Uh, don't worry if you're not sure on some of the settings, you can always go back and change any of them by just double-clicking on the character's name on the left side. To change the active triggers for a specific character, you need to click on their name in green on the left. This will add a red outline indicating that they're now selected. You'll notice when I pick chicken, the boxes appear in the right side next to my various folders. This is an indication of which triggers are assigned to work for this specific character. If the box is checked, that means that all triggers in that folder are selected. If it's a black square, that means that only some of them are selected. So I have a bunch of groups already set up. We can just ignore those. And we'll start by adding a new group, which is basically just a folder uh, to save the triggers into. So at the top of the home screen, you'll see a trigger group section. Under that, there's a little book with a sun on it. You can click the add button below that book with the little down arrow. This is going to bring up two options, add to select group, which allows you to add a folder inside of another folder, and add top level group, which adds a folder to the general directory. Let's select add top level group. I'm just going to call this one a test. I usually leave the comments blank, but if you're planning to share this trigger folder with someone, it might be helpful to add a description. I also always uncheck this enable characters by default. If you leave that checked, it will just automatically add anything in that folder to any new character that you add. Once you have that stuff set up, you can just click Save. You can now see there's a new top-level group called A-Test. 
if we want to add an additional group into that uh, new folder that we just created, you can just select it, go up to that drop down again, and then add to select group. So we'll do that and we'll just call this one a test two. Now, if we expand this top level group that we created, you're going to see a second group listed kind of like a subfolder. Groups are a great way to organize the various triggers that you want to use. It's also the only way to turn triggers on and off for a character. You can see under my classes folder, I have a bunch of different classes picked, but for chicken, I only have shaman selected since those will be the only ones that apply to him. So now that we have the group set up, let's work on adding an actual trigger uh, for a basic buff timer. So in this example, we're gonna add a trigger for the spell inner fire. So we're gonna go ahead and select the group or folder that we wanna add this trigger to. And then on the top, there's a trigger section you just want to click on that like sheet with the sun on it to add a new trigger. This will open a blank trigger editor page. We'll start by giving the trigger a name. Uh, we're just going to call this one inner fire. Next, we need to tell Gina what to search for in our log files. You can do this by either casting the spell and checking your logs to see what it said, or you can just go to the wiki. On the wiki, it lists what the log outputs are for each spell. In the spell details section, you can see it says you feel your body pulse with energy uh, when it's cast on you. So this is the line that we need to tell Gina to look for in the log files. I'll copy the text from the wiki and paste it into the search text field in the trigger editor. I would recommend checking the beginning and ending of each text line that you paste to make sure there aren't any extra spaces because extra spaces can break the triggers. I also typically delete the punctuation at the end. So below that you can see there's use regular expressions and use fast check. I'll cover those a bit later, but for now you can just leave them unchecked. Next you need to pick a category. We can just leave this as default for now. The comment box is similar to the group comment box. If you're planning on sharing the trigger with someone, I would recommend you complete this. You know, if the trigger is just for you, then you can just leave it blank. Now we need to tell Gina what audio and visual feedback we want when it sees that trigger phrase in our logs. On this basics tab, it lets you change the text pop-up and audio cues. Since inner fire is a pretty huge deal, we want to make sure that we're well aware of the spell landing on us. You can do this by adding a text pop-up and an audio cue, letting us know that the buff has landed. To display text, you just check this box labeled display text in the text settings. I'm just going to type in wow. We can also add an audio cue. So if we want it to use text-to-speech, we'll just check this use text-to-speech and then type what we want Gina to say. Again, you can test the audio with the green arrow at the bottom. Wow. The wow doesn't sound super excited, so instead let's use a sound file. This can be done by selecting play sound file instead of use uh, text-to-speech. And then we want to click on the three dots and navigate to where you have the sound file saved. I'll just pick this wow voice clip that I found online. And now when we test it, it'll play that sound file instead of the text-to-speech. Wow! When the buff lands, we also want a timer to start. This can be set up in the timer tab. Under timer type, we're going to pick countdown. And timer name is going to be what you want the text to be displayed as in the timer. So we're just going to type the best buff. Next, we have to input a duration for the timer. The duration info for most spells is going to be found on the wiki. Inner fire is 27 minutes. So we would type in that M section the number 27. For this example, I'm going to have it end after 20 seconds instead of 27 minutes, just so that we can see how all the triggers work. So I'll put the minutes back to zero and change the seconds to 20. For most buffs, if the timer is already running, we wanted to overwrite that current timer instead of starting a new one. This will keep one timer up to date instead of adding multiples for the same buff. We'll leave this as timer name matching. One thing that can be helpful is to put an end early trigger for when you die. And this will tell Gina to close the buff timers if your character dies. We can do that by double clicking on this box at the bottom and typing in you have been slain. Since inner fire is so powerful, it's important that we keep it up at all times. 
To help us remember to rebuff, let's set Gina up to remind us when the timer is getting low, and then remind us when the timer is run out. In the timer's ending tab, we can check to be notified when the timer reaches a certain point. In this case, let's ask Gina to notify us when the timer has 10 seconds left. We can have it display text and play a sound of a warning that the buff is fading. So I'm going to have it add the text rebuff. And then it will use text to speech to say inner fire is ending. Next, we want Gina to warn us when the timer has run out and the buff has faded. In the timer ended tab, we'll select to be notified and ask Gina to say the fire fades when the timer has expired. Now we can just hit save uh, to complete the setup of the inner fire trigger. If we set everything up correctly, this trigger should play a sound when the buff lands. It'll also display text on screen and start a timer. When the timer gets down to 10 seconds, it should notify us with a text pop-up on the screen and another audio cue. And finally, when the 20 seconds is over, it should notify us via audio cue. So let's test it out. I tabbed over into the game. I'm just going to cast Inner Fire on myself. And you can see that none of the triggers popped. This is because we did add the trigger to the library, but we haven't actually selected a character to use it for. Remember that anything that is checked is what's useful for this character. You can see I have chicken highlighted, but the new trigger is not set. So we'll select that and we'll go back over and give it another try. Wow. So you can see it played the audio, it popped up. The best buff timer is running down here. When it gets to 10, it should notify us again. Inner fire is ending. Telling us to rebuff. And then as it finally reaches zero, it should warn us that the best buff has faded. The fire fades. There we go. So we have all of the triggers set up to be a timer and all of the cues to let us know when the buff is fading. Awesome. So the trigger worked exactly as we expected. Uh, but let's say that we don't like where the text popped up or where that timer was located. We can change that by using the overlays and categories options in Gina. So first let's look at the overlays. You can see there are two options listed, text overlays and timer overlays. First I'm going to create a new text overlay. This will allow us to edit what pop-up text appears on the screen. So we'll click add. This box will appear in your display. I'm just going to rename this to test. You can see it lets you change the font and size. You know, inner fire is such an important buff that I'm just going to make this font size 90. Uh, sometimes it doesn't refresh, so you may have to click up and down on the arrows for the font size to get that to work. I'll also change it to Comic Sans since that's a much more readable font. We can also reposition this wherever we'd like to have it on the screen. So since it's such an important buff, we want to put it right in the middle here. Once we have it in the position that we want, we're just going to click Save. So next I'll do the same thing to add a new timer overlay. So I'll click the new for the little stopwatch here. We're going to rename this to Test Timer. Kind of same as before, you're able to resize this box, move it around, mess with the fonts, whatever you'd like to do. This can all be edited while the timer is running. So if you're not sure the size of the timer box, stuff like that, you can just cast the spell. And while the timer is up, you can move it around and adjust it. And once we're happy with where this is positioned, uh, we're just going to hit save. Okay, perfect. So we have the two overlays set up now, one for the text and one for the timer. To get a trigger to actually use these overlays, though, we need to set them up as part of a category. So at the top of your Gina window, there should be a section called category as well. We're going to pick that. And then we're just going to click add. This will generate a new category, and I'll just name it a test. In the new category, you can see there's a text and timer overlays that you can pick. So we'll just pick the a test for each of these. You can also change default colors here if you would like. So now that we have this new category set up, we're just going to go back to the original timer and change the category that's in so that it can take advantage of these new overlays. We're going to do that by just double clicking on the trigger. And then that drop down where it has category that says default, we'll just change it to a test. 
I'm also going to just turn off the audio triggers so that we don't lose our sanity testing this. So now when we tap back into the game and cast Interfire on ourselves, you should see that it's now displaying in the new overlays that we have set up. There we go. We have a basic setup for a timer in Gina. There's a ton of different use cases for this type of trigger. I'd suggest kind of just messing around with it, setting triggers and timers for commonly used buffs that you have. And it's also a really good way to keep track of dot timers. Next, I'll briefly touch on use of special tags and regular expressions. These can be used to set up slightly more complicated triggers and timers where the target isn't always going to be the same. If you want to use special tags, you need to first check the use regular expression box at the top of whichever trigger you're using. The three tags that I'll be covering are C, S, and T, S. The C tag is used to replace your current character's name. Let's say you wanted to create a trigger that displays your current character's name uh, when a buff is landing. We can go into our test trigger and change the display text to bracket C bracket has inner fire. Now when we cast the buff on ourselves, you'll see that the bracket C bracket has been replaced with my current character's name. So it says chicken has inner fire. The next one I'm gonna cover is the S tag, which is a wildcard. This can be used for any string of text. For example, if we want to set up an FTE message that goes out uh, when someone engages a mob, we can set it up to show S engages S1. So you can see the example that I have on screen. It'll search for anything with engages, and then it will display the first part engages the second part. So I'll tab back into the game and just type chicken engages tendies, and you'll see how that works. Notice that it says chicken says first. That's because since it's a wild card, it can't distinguish what kind of text it is. It just puts whatever was in front of the phrase engages as part of the first wild card. Similarly, any text after the word engages would display as the second wild card. Finally, I'll talk about the TS tag. This is the time span tag, which can be used to set up more dynamic timers. The way that the TS tag is formatted is specific to if you're doing hours, minutes, or seconds. So I'll post a brief description of how that works in the description below. On screen, you can see an example of a trigger using all three of these tags in tandem to create a custom timer. So this trigger is set up for Gina to see my character name, see the time expression, and then the wildcard to give the name to the timer. The timer will be named after my character and then whatever the wildcard was. So if I tab back in here, I can use the emote command slash E, type 30 for 30 seconds, and then super timer for the name of the timer. And when I hit enter, you'll see that a timer pops up called chicken super timer for 30 seconds. You can share triggers with other people by simply right clicking on the group or trigger, selecting send to clipboard and quick share. Then go back into the game and just paste the text in a tell to whoever you wanna share the trigger with. Others can use this method to share triggers with you as well. When you receive one of these strings in a tell or see it in say, Gina should prompt you to add it to your library. Lastly, you can manually clear out timers by going to commands, stop alert, and selecting the character you want the timers to end for. You can also stop all timers by just clicking on stop alert itself. And that's everything I want to cover about the basics of using Gina. Hopefully you found it helpful. I am by no means an expert at Gina, but if you have any questions, feel free to post below and I will do my best to answer.